The way we consume and share news today is largely rooted in social media. Al is a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online. For our daily social media minute, we're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Yellow. Lello. <laughs> She's wearing yellow in yeah. case you don't have a visual on here. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. A lot of buzzwords. Uh, starting with revelations about YouTuber Tsuyang's abusive relationship that stormed social media. It, it makes the conversation difficult considering that the perpetrator has passed away. That's right. Um, uh, all of this sort of like came abruptly. It did. It really um, did. Yeah, mm. it, it shocked a lot of people. It shocked mm. me. Yeah. I'm a fan. Um, so, yeah, we're talking about Ji Young. Yeah. Uh, she's a mukbang YouTuber. Mm. Um, and she yesterday revealed the, the full story of how she started her streaming career um, on the, the video platform. Yeah. And she also shared the really horrifying details of the threats and abuse. Uh, she received from her ex-boyfriend. Physical and otherwise. That's right. Uh, so in case our listeners are unaware, Tsiang is a superstar of mukbang, maybe even synonymous mm. with the style of creating videos with more than 10 million subscribers on her channel, around 1 million views for each video. I think she's well received, not just locally, but worldwide That's at this right. point. Mm. Recently, she uh, she was voted, in fact, Korea's favorite YouTuber. That's right. So uh, in her really emotional 45-minute live stream, uh, Tsiang starts by saying that she wants to address something serious and that she had turned on the camera uh, abruptly and that she wasn't able to prepare a script. Uh, she then goes on to explain that her now dead ex-boyfriend had physically and mentally abused her for a really long time. Uh, she said he would hit her with blunt objects like an umbrella. Uh, he would hit parts of her body because it would be too obvious obvious uh, in the face. And that's only tip of the iceberg. Mm. She goes on to make much more serious allegations of using her fame to, you know, make her do things essentially yeah. that she didn't want to do. Uh, so she seemed like a different person in the video because most of her videos or live streams were carefully crafted to look a certain way, yeah. right? But And in, she's usually really chipper. And exactly. She's, you know, cute and yeah. she's always happy. And that she looks happy. That is the appeal, isn't yeah. it, right? Um, but here, everything is a little bit more, actually, a lot more raw. Mm. She looks traumatized. She looks frightened. Yeah, that's right. Um, and she she cries uh, openly and uh, she, she details instances of physical, verbal and mental abuse uh, she revealed the details of the physical assault, uh, the threat to expose a sexually explicit video, uh, and how he forced her to work at his workplace. Um, she also mentioned uh, how she contemplated once uh, about quitting her career because of her ex-boyfriend's, you know, actions and assaults, uh, but that she ultimately decided to move on, yeah. uh, move forward okay. uh, with YouTube. Um, she explains that uh, her ex-partner had been extorting money from her, uh, you know, which was stated during this live stream. Um, and she mentioned a sum of around 4 billion won, roughly $2.9 million. Uh, and the details of all of this uh, were confirmed by her lawyers. So her lawyers also make an appearance in the That's live right. stream, right? Yeah, her lawyers from uh, Taeyeon Law Firm made an appearance. They organized her story while providing evidence of the assault through voice recordings and photographs. Um, and not long after the live stream, social media users and fans started like sort of piecing uh, the bits and pieces of the story together. Uh, they noticed that almost all of her videos uh, at this time, uh, you know, when she's wearing like short sleeves in the summertime, yeah. reveal some sort of bruise or mark on her arms. Or band-aids. Yeah, cover band-aids. It. And there's one video in particular where she's uh, outdoors, she's uh, grilling meat, and uh, in the video, her arms and fingers are covered mm. in bandages. Really telltale, si telltale signs. And yeah. 
I wonder. We only met. We only see it in hindsight. That's right. We only see it in hindsight. And uh, yeah, according to news reports, criminal cases had been filed against her former boyfriend, but the cases were closed after he took his own life. It's it's a daunting and traumatizing yeah. story. Um, the fact that she opened up about it. I mean, she didn't have to do that, did she? Yeah. But uh, I hope that gives at least a beginning to the closure that she's desperately seeking for. Uh, there are other details in the video, including, uh, you know, she, she alleged that uh, some YouTubers, mm -hmm. a group of YouTubers uh, had blackmailed her. Uh, they had extorted money from her as Using well. Using the same resources? Um, y you know, uh, she alleges to I don't want to get into too much detail. Okay. Because, because these are allegations. Right. So... All right. Yeah, rather um, shocking. Okay, so closure is a difficult thing. Mm. It's also personal. Um, but if you have millions of followers across the world, yeah. it, it does get you know aired out for the world to see. That's right. But at least she's trying to take control of her own narrative. Mm -hmm. That's the latest. Yep. All right, on to our second story today. Now, this is absolutely concerning. China is rocked by a cooking oil contamination scandal. So, for example, if a big truck that used to carry, I don't know, fuel, toxic material yeah. uh, now carries your cooking oil, wouldn't you be concerned too? <sighs> Yes. Yeah, that's the story. <laughs> Goes without saying. So the, the Chinese government says it is investigating the allegations of fuel tankers. That for your been, cars. Yeah, for your cars that have been carrying toxic chemicals uh, to transport cooking oil and other food ingredients like uh, syrup, you know, after they have been carrying toxic chemicals without being cleaned properly between loads. So in China, tankers are not limited to any particular type of goods so they can in theory carry food products straight after transporting say coal-based oils <laughs> I, mm, I, it makes no sense. I'm a little bit speechless, but yeah. um, ideally, what they would do is clean the tankers yep. and then start Thoroughly. to and start utilizing it. I'm sure there are other. Um, uh, uh, fuel tankers that mm. do that but it, it seems that these videos has raised all kinds of red flags now the controversy has spread online as social media users rightfully express concerns about potential food contamination it's stuff going into our mouths i mean it into our bodies all right so i mean this is pretty serious yeah so according to one driver quoted by a local chinese newspaper okay. transporting cooking oil in contaminated fuel trucks uh is said to have been so widespread in the country that it is considered an open secret Actually, I did see this interview. I mean, he he's blurred and his voice yep. is altered, mm. but yeah, he says this on the record. Yeah. So the case is the latest blow to public trust in the Chinese government's ability to enforce food safety standards. I mean, we're seeing these people who sell now cooking oil drink it on live stream to say that my products are safe. Yeah. You know, the controversy has uh, uh, understandably naturally been the top trending topic <sighs> on Chinese social media in recent days. On Weibo, uh, there have been tens of thousands of posts about the scandal. Uh, these posts have racked up millions of views. Now, many people compared it to the 2008 Sanlu milk scandal that caused 300,000 children to become sick. At the time, at least six died after drinking powdered milk contaminated with high levels of the industrial chemical melamine. That's years ago. Yep. Um, did they not learn their lesson becomes an important question. Um, why isn't the Chinese health authorities doing more to intervene? Mm. So what about the companies behind the products that were transported in the fuel tankers? Have they released an official statement? You know, these claims involve actually not one, but several major Chinese companies, mm -hmm. including a subsidiary of state-owned Sinograin and the Hopeful Grain and Oil Group. And both of said they're conducting a thorough self-investigation. Right. The Chinese government says that uh, food safety officials are going to carry out the investigation into these allegations, really serious allegations, and they've promised to punish any companies and individuals involved in any sort of wrongdoing, and they vow to immediately publish the findings of their investigation. That seems to be important transparency when it comes to the Food Safety Administration, because you're talking mm. about public trust, uh, that yeah. more would be done in case of foul play and this is foul play involving food potentially life-threatening food yes, that's okay. right we'll leave it there for now but that's generating a lot mm. of buzz online here's what's else um i mean we talk about the abnormalities of <laughs> this monsoon season quite regularly but i mean if you've seen the pictures it looks 
photoshopped. I know, right? It looks, it looks fake. Unreal. Um, it and, looks like something AI would generate. And in this generate. day and age, that's yeah. a pretty legitimate question. Is that AI generated? Mm. Is that an idea? Um, and we're going to start streaming the images. But there look we go. at those. It's so dramatic. Look at the rain clouds. And it's just pouring down. It looks like a gigantic mushroom. So this <laughs> photo of a sudden heavy downpour in Wonju in Gangwon, the province, has gotten a lot of people buzzing on social media. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So just yesterday, uh, the, the photo uh, captioned, it looked like a nuclear bomb outside. It does look like a mushroom yeah, cloud, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, made its round on social media. The photo was taken from a distance and it shows heavy rain pouring down from this very large rain cloud, seemingly over one cotton concentrated area. Other areas look fine. It's just that one area. Um, that's why it looks like a mushroom. It looks like a mushroom stem, right? Yeah. The downpour. I, some, I mean, sometimes it happens, right? In yeah. my neighborhood, it's not raining, but maybe mm. just a few kilometers over, it's raining. But you just don't get this kind of dramatic image. <laughs> right. Like a real downpour concentrated one area. Oh, the poor guys who are just being showered by that. <laughs> I know, right? Could you imagine? All right. So I do see where this atomic bomb knowledge comes from because it does look like a stem of a mushroom it yeah. really does. Now, while the photo's authenticity isn't confirmed... Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I think that looks pretty real. Yeah. Um, the Korea Meteorological Administration reported that around 5 p.m. the previous day, a shower cloud capable of producing about 70 millimeters of rain per hour <laughs> developed northeast of the Wonju Sports Complex. Now, a cafe owner near the sports complex who saw the viral photo online said... I I remember the heavy rain around 5 p.m. lasting for about 30 minutes. Oh, wow. uh, a nearby real estate agent also added, it started raining heavily around 5 p.m. yesterday. I tried to leave work early, but got caught in the downpour. It was so bad that people couldn't yeah. leave their work. Okay. And people said, it rained so hard, it felt like there was a hole in the sky. <laughs> Even with the car wipers on full speed, visibility was near zero oh. and traffic slowed to a crawl on the six lane road. I mean, 70 millimeters throughout maybe yeah. six seven, eight hours. Mm. That would be a lot of rain, too. But this is per hour. Per hour. Yeah, that's a lot of rain. Now, predicting the exact timing and location of these types of rain showers Mm. is apparently still beyond current science and technology. You're kidding. Yeah, it's like trying to guess where bubbles will appear (laughs) when you're boiling water in a pot. I think that is a perfect (laughs) analogy. Trying to guess where the bubbles will appear when you're boiling water in a pot. Mm, Impossible. Okay, so unpredictability. We love that in weather forecasts. (laughs) No, we don't. (laughs) Something to look forward to. The monsoon season, it's not over yet. In fact, it will start pouring down again throughout the peninsula next week. Yeah, so always carry an umbrella with you. You know, I bought a new umbrella. I yeah. did. Like well a done strong you. one because <laughs> I told you last year, mine flipped. <laughs> yeah. You know, when there's like heavy wind, yeah. yeah, those tiny umbrellas, they don't work. They really don't yeah. work. Thanks, Erica. <laughs> Have a great weekend. See you next Monday. See you next week. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.